Ministry. Uh, today I would like to talk to you about Jesus' dojo and how Jesus' uh, ministry could be looked at in a martial arts style of way. <coughs> um, I've practiced martial arts approximately about 15 years um, and I was able to do a lot of things. And through reading the Gospels, I was able to relate some of those things that Jesus was doing with his disciples into the training that I had as martial artist, as a martial artist. And uh, so one of the techniques which I showed you here today was breaking of wood, knowing how to have a, the proper fist, how to have the right alignment to do that technique so that it would do what I wanted to do. <clears throat> so the first thing that we learn in martial arts is our stance. We have what we call a forward leaning stance, good for strengthening your legs, has good balance, not really easy to move around, but it's more of a strength technique. The other one we have is like a horse stance, same thing, kind of a strength, you know, you do have sideway movement. The other technique is a fighting stance, where your hands are up, protecting your face, you got a good stance here, you're able to move in all kinds of directions, quick and easy. So, I was trying to find Jesus' stance. What kind of stance does Jesus have? And <laughs> come to find out he has many. <laughs> he just kind of moves around and he, he doesn't really plant his feet anywhere. So I'm going to go with the other way of looking at stance, which is your foundation, your base, what you have as a base for where you interact with people. Okay? So we're going to go over to the Bible. I'm grab my little handy dandy chair here. We're going to open up to Matthew 4. We're going to go through verses 1 through 10. And the story we got going on here is that after Jesus was baptized, he took he uh, went out into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He was going to be tempted by the devil. So this little bit is going to give us Jesus' stance or his foundation. Okay. <clears throat> then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For forty days and forty nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No. The scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple, and he said, If you are the Son of God, jump off from the scriptures. Jump off, jump off. For the scriptures say, He will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. Next the, de the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory. I will give it, to, give it all to you, he said, if you will kneel down and worship me. He says, get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say you must worship the Lord, the Lord your God and serve only him. So, we see in this story how Jesus is using God's word as his foundation. He's not wavering from it. He's using it to hold him steady and in the, on the right path and in the right direction. We need to do the same thing. We have to stay in God's word, and we have to understand God's word and read it. And that is done through small groups. On our own, when we have questions, we go to our pastor or to somebody and we ask these questions. So we know exactly how to use these techniques and the stance of staying with God's Word. And I think it's very important that we have that knowledge and, and be able to use it. In my short term of, of being on this path, I'm really surprised how many times I'm able to utilize those words from God when I need to 
them at the right time and help whoever I am interacting with to focus on the right direction. Um, I'm going to do this into like a three-step series. Uh, after this one, we're going to we're going to go into uh, the punches and kicks kicks of Jesus' ministry and what it looked like for for him to use God's word in that style. And then at the end of it, we're going to uh, kind of wrap it up into like the proverbial uh, kumite or the the final sparring technique that Jesus used. And a lot of this came from a show that I watched. It's called The Chosen. A really good show. I would recommend that to anybody who is a, a believer or a, who's interested in, in Christ. It's a really good show. It gives you a background of each character. And uh, one show I was watching, the disciples were on a fire. And there was a zealot that was along with them. He's over by his tent and he's practicing his, his techniques and doing all this. And the disciples are going, why is he always practicing that stuff? We don't, we, we don't fight. You know, we, we just follow Jesus and, and do what Jesus does. We don't do no fighting. So my question in my head is, why don't we always practice? You don't have to practice a punch, a kick, and, and dance technique. But we do got to practice the art of using God's word in a way that is brings glory to God and helps whoever it is that we're around to move them in the right direction towards a better life. Uh, I fought Kumite. I've done a lot of that martial arts stuff. But towards the end of my career, I came into the, the light of grappling more than doing the, the punching techniques because the punching causes another aggravation, but the grappling or the, the, the technique of being close to somebody was less aggressive and caused the, the, inner, the angry energy to dissipate. Jesus does the same thing with God's word. When he's confronted by the Pharisees or any of those guys who are pushing against him to, for, the, for him to mess up, he always was able to spin the story around and put the technique back to them to figure it out. But he used God's word in that technique. So I, I don't want to go too far into application. I want to stay with nice foundation first. And I think that's really important. Um, you can get build up your foundation by reading the Bible, uh, reading any kind of comment, a, a good faith commentary, interacting with small group uh, areas, um, studying with friends, exactly how we build our foundation with God's word. And uh, I really appreciate this time, and uh, thank you, and have a good day.